Today I want to look at five changes that you may undergo if you stop emotionally smothering your children. So obviously this video is geared towards you parents out there, but if you're growing up and maybe you're getting ready to have a family, or if you're somebody who's been emotionally smothered in their life, this video will be helpful because you can learn what not to do when you have your own children. But for you parents out there right now who are emotionally smothering a child, pay attention to these five signs, changes that you may undergo if you stop smothering your child. Because you're smothering the child for a reason. You're smothering your child emotionally, overtaking them, turning them into your little mini husband or mini wife as a way to avoid something uncomfortable in your life. So the emotionally taking over of the child is the symptom. So let's look in this video at the underlying reasons for why that's happening in the first place. So number one, you're going to feel a void, some emptiness, some sadness. It may even verge on depression, but that's a good thing because you're finally willing to get in touch with your real feelings. And these sad, depressed sort of feelings won't last forever. But you're going to need to go through that like a mourning, a grieving, because in a way it is the death of a relationship, the death of a completely unhealthy, destructive relationship for your child that you caused because you wanted to avoid what? Well, it could be many things that you wanted to avoid. So that could mean you don't like yourself, there's self-loathing, maybe you have a lot of self-criticism about yourself, could be you're in a bad marriage, you've given up on it, could be you have social anxiety, could be you've always wanted to find a way to run from life, so to speak, not take it on and deal with life's challenges. So you found what seems like a safe, fuzzy place to hide, a warm place to hide, which is in essence hiding behind your children. But now if you stop the emotional smothering, you're gonna have to deal with your own crap. And part of dealing with your own crap, which is really the healthiest way to go, will mean for a short period of time, you're going to feel a void and emptiness. It's like you're losing your drug. It's like somebody giving up alcohol or they've been a drug abuser for 20 years and now they can't have their drug anymore. They're going to go through withdrawals, which leads into number two. Another change will be that you're probably going to have a bit of an identity crisis. Who am I? What am I? What are my needs, my goals, my sense of self without having to emotionally smother a child? I don't know what I'm about. I don't know who I really am. These are things you hear from parents who emotionally smother their children, especially if they have narcissistic tendencies, which parents do that take over a child. And narcissism just simply implies the person is making it be more about them than focus on the best interest of a child. Now that's their identity. They're, they're the parent. They're the parent that is so loved. My child just loves me. So they tell themselves as a way to keep doing what they're doing because quite often the obedient child is really thinking like, how can I get out of this situation? But they're too young to get out of the situation. So then they get a bit older and they run away like I did or they stay with the parent perhaps for the rest of their life, very codependent relationship. Maybe you were abused as a child and that's why you've taken over your child emotionally. The third change, if you're married, you're gonna to have to repair your marriage with your spouse. And if you don't want to repair it and you are still married, you're gonna to have to have the balls to finally be an adult and end the relationship. It's not healthy for you if you're still in it. At the same time, because you're not smothering a child or all of your children, you're going to now have the freedom and begin to realize you need to make some friends. You need to find peers who are equal to you, not hanging around your kids all the time. So if you pull back from emotionally smothering your child, it'll give you an opportunity to repair your marriage. You may need to go into marital therapy for that and to begin new friendships in your life where you're all on an equal playing field. You're not having to rely on a youngster to fulfill your inner needs. Number four, you're going to get to know your child as a person, an individual, not as an extension of you. What a relief it's going to be for your child. They can finally be free of you, of this lid of intense energy coming at them all the time, which is so toxic to the child, it doesn't get expressed a lot because they don't have the words for it. Or if they have the words, the parent, the parent who's smothering doesn't usually want to hear it. So now you're pulling back, you're letting your child just be, letting them find their own way in life, which of course is going to be so healthy for that child. And now the parent can have a new relationship with that child. 
an individual. They're not an extension of who you are, nor should they have ever been an extension. So if the kid is still quite young, let's say not a teenager yet, then obviously you're still parenting them, you're still guiding them, you're still mentoring them, but you're now realizing that they're an individual growing up and you're not smothering them anymore. But if they're a teenager and older, then you can actually get to know them even more so as an adult individual, where now the child will really respect you because you're letting them find themselves. And that'll help you in so many aspects of life as years and years go on. When you're the father who's now an old man, or you're the mother who's now an old woman, you're going to have a great relationship with your son or daughter versus them always trying to get away from you having to restrict interaction or completely remove any kind of interaction. They don't want to see you. They want to pull back. Remember the saying, if you love something, set it free. If it comes back to you, it's yours. If it doesn't, it never was. And number five, lastly, expect both anger and joy in life. So anger, because if you really pull back and go through this process, you may reflect back and wonder, what the heck did I do? I can't believe that I risked my child's emotional health for my own needs. And you may have some anger at yourself, a lot of regret, There's some tough feelings that may come up which need to be dealt with when one is pulling away from abusive behavior. So you may have some anger about what you have done in the past, but you can also have incredible joy about knowing that you stopped it, joy about where you're headed with this child, how you're now treating them, the relationship that you can have as the decades go on, a healthy relationship, and joy in yourself as you're getting to know yourself, finally finding out what you're all about without having to smother a child. Please leave me some comments below, any thoughts, opinions you have about what I've just shared. Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.